Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna go over how to become a blue teamer in 2025 going into 2026. We're almost at the end of the year, so hopefully everyone is having a good year so far and gonna get into the holidays very soon. So I wanna go ahead and go over different tools, different ways to get into the field because yes, I've been a blue teamer. Yes, I know blue teaming. So I wanna go ahead and show you guys some path into the world of you know, security engineering, blue teaming, defending, and all that good stuff. So there's, there's quite a few ways to actually get into the field. And this is obviously, I stumbled upon it getting into IT cybersecurity was a pivot point for me. I wasn't just jumping into blue teaming, penetration testing or whatever. So what I did, obviously, I learned some of the core stuff, right? The core stuff that we need to understand is networking and protocols. And we'll go over Wireshark, just a tab, right? This is not gonna be a video about Wireshark and all these tools, but as long as you understand like TCP IP, DNS, DHCP, VPNs, routers, switches, firewalls, all those networking and protocols, you should be good, right? That's definitely a starting point. Then we can go into, which is, operating systems and fundamentals of those. If you want to understand uh, Linux, Mac, Windows, get some hands-on with different events, different logs, system logs, or Linux logs. These are all, all very, very critical, right? And you can learn this just by simply installing Kali Linux, or in my case, I'm running Ubuntu, and you can just look at the different you know, go into var logs and you can check out different aspects of that. But it gets even better, right? You know, understanding some scripting will definitely be a benefit. You know, you can learn some bash, some PowerShell, some Python, just for automating, automating some tasks and maybe like some data parsing. That's what I would do, right? These, are, I just wrote some stuff down, things that I do sometimes on a daily basis if I have to get into this kind of stuff. And then understanding incident response and forensics. Well, if you guys ever heard of DFIR, digital forensics and incident response, you can learn about logs. You can understand the timeline of the evidence of what you're trying to handle, right? That's definitely a critical thing if you're getting into blue teaming and incident response. And then also threat intelligence and detection engineering. Right? So understanding how attackers use TTPs, understanding uh, the MITRE attack framework, and we'll get all into this. This is just pretty much before we get into the tools and understanding the tools, these are some fundamentals that you should have bound packed. Okay, so I do have some pulled up already. Oh, I thought I did. Uh, maybe I, did I minimize it? Let me go ahead and minimize that. And maybe I exit out. Okay, not a problem. We're gonna go ahead and remind me later. And the first one we can go to is Wireshark. So let's go to Wireshark, Linux, whatever. So Wireshark, what is it? Let's just go ahead and this is the download, but like if we just go to Wireshark itself, it's pretty much, it's gonna go ahead and look at the packets. It's gonna inspect the packets and the protocol. Um, you know, it's a protocol analyzer, right? So I have it installed on this Ubuntu box. So. I wanna go ahead and run sudo. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. And the interface that I wanna actually run my uh, Wireshark on is interface ENS33. So if I hit enter, we're gonna open up Wireshark. These are all my interfaces, but I'm gonna go ahead and start this on uh, ENS33. And if we just, for an example, we go out to, I don't know, google.com, and we can, let's stop this now, right? So you can understand, say, say for example, TCP port uh, 443. So that's uh, HTTPS, right? So I don't know if I can make this a little larger. Uh, let's see. Yep, I can. Whoop, that's a little too big. All right, so, and the way I did that was control alt and the plus sign on your keyboard. So here we have some different sources and destination of different protocols. So you can arrange it by protocol, the length, the information, and all that stuff, right? So digging into this, like I said, this is not gonna be a, you know, a video on Wireshark, but just clicking on this and understanding the transport layer security, understanding TCP, understanding the internet protocol, the ethernet, this is pretty much the OSI model and how data traverses, right? So understanding that, I wanna X out of here because I don't wanna get too much on a tangent. So the next cool tool we can learn is something called Zeek. Zeek is 
is also like bro i believe it's called bro the zeke security so this is an open source secu network security monitoring tool so this is another tool you can just say get zeke you can install this you can play around with it obviously this is not an install video i just want to give you some tools to learn in order to become a blue teamer right so this is definitely something you should you know definitely get into if you're looking to monitor your network traffic and you know you can use nagios you can use uh there's another one called uh, cacti there's so many other tools out there and something else we can do is uh let's see oh like an open source ids so let's go back to google and there's snort s-n-o-r versus uh, cicada is another one so snort is an older you know single threaded ids ips that is simpler to use so like what i used to do is i used to install like open vos uh, not open vos excuse me um open sense and pf sense and then install uh snort as an ids module and you can see how the data traverses and goes through your network and there's another one that you can check out i haven't used this in so long which is security onion so the security onion solution is definitely another good one uh, like i haven't used this in a very very long time so if we go to download let's see it's yeah it's still under uh, github you can download the iso you can install this and you can tinker around with um re, uh, security onion and it's de definitely a good one to utilize and tinker with and maybe uh, maybe i can make a video on installing security onion but like i said this is mostly you know some some guidance and another one that i would recommend which i really 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 like is uh waza waza so waza is an open source xdr open source sim the reason why i say this is because you can get everything in one pane of glass yes if you're in the real world you're going to use microsoft sentinel you're going to use splunk you're going to use maybe log rhythm so many other sim solutions but waza gives you everything in one and you can get it for free so yeah definitely this is a good one to tinker with right so these are all like different network monitoring tools right and um the next thing we can talk about is edr solutions right i'm not going to go on every single edr but i just have some little notes that i wanted to take down so edr stands for endpoint uh, detection and response. So think about CrowdStrike or Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, or uh, th there's so many other SIM solutions, excuse me, EDR solutions. But think about like Sysmon, right? Sysmon, Microsoft's Endpoint Login Utility. And this pairs perfectly with different kind of rule, like Sigma rule or Sigma rules and all that good stuff. L like Waza is definitely another one because it's an open source EDR. And it's central, uh, it, it like logs, brings everything together and it has like file integrity, vulnerability detection. This tool is amazing, right? I would definitely, definitely check it out. Then you have uh, uh, CAPE. So CAPE, I believe is from SANS, if I remember correctly. Uh, K-A-P-E, forensics, yep. So, yep, right here, I believe. Yep, this is it. So I believe, I remember seeing this in SANS. I didn't take the SANS course, but a friend of mine was telling me that he was doing some forensics and he did something with CAPE. So it, f it finds, collects, and processes um, forensically uh, useful artifacts in minutes. So it's pretty much like a parser, it goes through. It's been a while. I, I tinkered with it for a little bit, very, very long time ago, um, but it's not a tool that I use on a daily, but it's definitely something to you know, notif uh, notice. Then you have OS query, and that's queries all the endpoint activity using some kind of uh, SQL style commands and stuff like that. We talked about some SIM and log management, but you have Splunk, you have uh, um, Elastic Stack, you have uh, Gray Log, all this, you know, core log um, correlation platforms. You have Microsoft Sentinel. I just said that. That's a cloud-based SimSOAR, tightly integrated with Office 365, Microsoft 365, and all that good stuff. 
But then you have other sim solutions like Q Radar, uh, Log Rhythm, Alien Vault, uh, OSSIM. Uh, M. Uh, these are all enterprise grade monitoring solutions. So maybe if you get a, uh, a blue teamer position, you're probably going to be asked for one of those experiences. But don't worry if you have some kind of sim experience, you can put that on. Don't don't sweat it. You don't have to really like touch every single point on a job description because I've been hired that I only knew like 30% of it. And then I learned it all on the job. So don't sweat that. And some other cool, I put this in because I love threat intel um, and hunting, threat hunting and stuff like that. Like there's different kind of tools out there. There's um, which MISP, this is a cool tool. This is like threat intel uh, for a whole bunch of IOCs and it shares the feeds, which is really, really cool. And then you have OpenCTI, Multigo, uh, Spiderfoot. This is, this visualized the attacker's uh uh, infrastructure and it also has a correlations then you have obviously virus total any run this will analyze malware samples safely so you can have your own sandbox environment which is really really cool you don't want to you know tinker around with some malware that you know a user sent you uh, on your regular machine right that won't be a good day then you have like shodan and uh, sentry and this obviously searches for um exposed assets and misconfigurations that's definitely another one for threat intel then you have the mida attack navigator which is the uh, map that detects different coverages and to this special uh this the specified attack technique okay. so we can go out to the mida really quick um what is it yeah i lost my chain of thought oh yeah mit mida Yep, attack. So here, if we click on here, mita.attack or attack.mita, and you can see everything here. I'm not gonna go over this, but you can tinker with this. So if, for example, in the initial access, like phishing, this is a good one. And you can see what the phishing is and then different uh, procedure name uh, examples and different ICSs, mobile enterprise, reconnaissance, and it's a massive, oh, active scanning, vulnerability scanning, blah, blah, blah. Let's, you can just click in here and just look at different APTs and you can get the gist of that. All right, so next up that you, that you should understand as a blue teamer, at least from my experience, when I was doing a lot of blue teaming and doing a lot of forensics and investigation, tools I always had on my laptop was autopsy. So autopsy is a file, uh, file system forensics and timeline creation. So you use this to actually take a screen, uh, a snippet of your, uh, your, your drive, and you can actually use autopsy to actually do a forensics investigation on that. Then you have uh, memproc FS. This does memory forensics. And then you have uh, FTK imager this imaging and uh and is for evidence as well and then you have redline this is for memory and malware triage okay and this is from uh, i think that's from google i put google in my notes but uh so then you have automation and threat detection you have sore platforms you have powershell scripts different kinds of stuff to actually parse your data and that's pretty much it right for the tools and if you want to get started learning about these tools right I want to talk about some training paths that you can that you can learn today and these are ones that i've done um i've checked out i know that they're valid and they're good you can check out blue team labs online so let's just go ahead and just google that so you have blue team whoops blue team labs online this is really really cool so it's a cyber range i really like this company and you can see like investigations, you can see like uh, different kinds of, a, a lot of different things you can learn. And it's obviously it's in England. I think that's the pound, but yeah, you, you can definitely check them out. Then you have another one called Cyber Defenders, Cyber Defenders. So if cyberdefenders.org, this is another cool blue team SOC DFIR training that you can definitely, definitely try out and you can practice. So you can see here different kinds of labs and everything like that. And then you have 
uh, certifications as well. You have, I believe there's two, blue team level one certification, um, some security blue. So you have this one, and then I believe you have level two as well. So you have, let me come back for a second. And let's come here. Let's go to trainings. Yep, you have the blue team level two. Let me zoom this in. And let's go back to training. And you have blue team level two. And yeah, this is really, really cool. Like I did do their blue team level one training um, a while ago, and I thought it was pretty, pretty good pretty good stuff and you know certifications you can do CompTIA security plus CYSA plus and then you have other ones from SANS which if you're rich you go there and that's pretty much it that I wanted to talk about today so that's the tools um, we talked about different ways to get into to to blue teaming and what kind of things you should do and if there's anything that I missed you know these are things I did right the way you did it is your way if there's someone that watched this that learned something from a different path please put it in the comments below I'm really really interested in learning as well so thank you so much and before I let you guys go I want to announce something that I started and I've been doing it for some time now, but I left, I kept it on a DL and I started a company called ISP security. So what we do at ISP security is penetration testing, different cybersecurity uh, services. So yeah, if you or anyone you know need any kind of penetration testing, me and my team will be lovely to help you guys reach out. You can reach, I'll leave, put, you know, put the contact information in the description below. You can reach out and if you reach out and you recommend a client or a company or a partner and we close a deal, you will get a referral bonus. So thank you again for participating in that. If you do, awesome. And thank you so much for viewing. I'll see you guys in the next one.